Hello. You are here for Kubernetes SIG not maintainer's track. So if you lost, I closed my eyes. <laughs> you can run away. Yeah, uh, but really, welcome. Uh, really happy to see all of you. Uh, I'm Sergey Kanjelev. I'm uh, chair of Signot and work for Google. Hi, folks. Uh, I'm Ronald Patel. I work for Red Hat, uh, also a Signot chair and tech lead. So today marks our first in-person maintainer's track in a very long time. So if you go to YouTube and search for recordings for maintainer's track, one from like maybe seven years back will be in person. Uh, starting COVID, we uh, published our recordings every uh, KubeCon, KubeCon Europe, KubeCon North America, so twice a year. Uh, last one was uh, covering everything about um, roadmap up to 127 uh, for, oh, sorry, typo. Um, it was about Europe uh, 2023, uh, back from Amsterdam. And it was also online. So this is the first in person. Um, just if you came from China and you can do Chinese, uh, there is also KubeCon China. Uh, this year there was a maintenance track for SIGNode, and uh, I put, put some notes there uh, if you're interested. And um, uh, it was also quite interesting uh, that uh, we have uh, coverage in China now, and it's great. So today we will be talking as usual. Uh, structure of our talks uh, generally is the same. We're talking about Signot overview. Uh, then we cover some features we recently worked on and we plan to work on. Then we try to go a little bit deep into one of the area. And finally, we asking uh, to join and uh, telling you how to do it. So yeah, let's uh, get going. First, it's a Signot. So when you look at uh, Signot and thinking about containers, you may imagine this uh, nice, beautiful ship uh, that is full of containers that are perfectly stacked together and ship is sailing uh, towards the sea, horizon is clear, nothing happening. So what typically happens uh, in this naval analogy in uh, our life is uh, some containers just uh, catching on fire several, all the time. Uh, have you heard of crash back loop of? Well, this is a container catching on fire again and again and over and over, and we're like, okay, fire extinguisher, okay, fire extinguisher. Like, yeah, we'll just put a person here uh, standing next to you, but we have nothing to do. We, we can just drop you off, but yeah, we'll just carry you. Um, in other case, uh, it's even worse. Uh, somebody, instead of container with a steel metal frame and borders, they'll bring a platform with a bag of rice on it. Like, oh, it's just bag of rice. It has no limits, no land, nothing. And like, yeah, just carry it. Like, put it in the corner. Put nine of them in the corner, in fact. And scale it like, happy, happy, yeah. It's just bag of rice. It's small. And then water drips in it. And like, it uh, grew nine times in size and uh, 11 times in weight. Uh, and like, now you need to throw things away because this rice is like so huge. Like, okay, let's throw this container, that container, no, now, now you can throw rice away. And yeah, uh, life is messy. And uh, if you go back from Neville analogy back to real life, Kubelet is in constant fight between what API server imaging uh, configuration needs to be. It has a declarative configuration for every port, what it needs to be doing. Uh, and Kubelet is trying to apply this configuration as much as best as possible to real life and reconcile constantly with container runtime, asking how is this dude doing, how is this container doing? Let me uh, poke it and uh, if it's still working, I will report back that it's okay. If it's not okay, I will tell uh, that it's not okay. So constantly reconciling state, uh, working with resource managers, with uh, runtime, with uh, CNI, with storage, with everything. And um, it is a console battle. Uh, there are all sorts of conditions and race conditions uh, that needs to be taken care of. So this long description of Signot work uh, can be boiled into our charter. Our charter is uh, Signot is responsible for components that support controlled interactions between pods and host resources. Yeah, I think it's a definition that covers most of what we do. 
and the sig node is vertical sig. Um, in Kubernetes, we have verticals and horizontal sigs. Horizontal sig may be something like logging uh, uh, as a functionality being covered by sig instrumentation that covers logging for all the components. So sig node is vertical sig, it owns components. Uh, owning components is harder than applying some f features to all the components from my perspective, because you need to be always there. Um, and um, uh, Signot owns a lot. When I got introduced to Kubernetes uh, code base, uh, it was described to me that uh, half of it is API machinery, uh, then uh, most of it is Signot and everything else. Yeah, so it's, uh, I mean, some SIGs are tricky. They put their components outside, and it's a huge component, and like, oh, yeah, yeah, just small component here, and in reality, like, it's so much logic, it's just hidden somewhere. Um, but if you look at uh, Kubernetes core, uh, API machinery in Signot is a, biggest uh, pieces of uh, code base. And uh, yeah, as I said, we own a lot, and not only on uh, Kubelet, uh, we also have other components like container runtime interface. Uh, we have many people working with runtimes itself, and uh, uh, this is a very close connection. Um, we own smaller components like node problem detector, uh, kernel modules. They are all very important um, and um, needs attention because they all solve very specific customer problems and they're all running in production. Um, and we run on many environments. So where we are right now, uh, last recording, if you had a chance to watch it, it was covering uh, how, we fired, how we fought permabetas for a long time and how we almost winning. And yeah, we almost won, um, I mean, numbers lie a little bit, I will explain why numbers lie. So you can see that five features, are, like I, I took all the feature gates, and I, uh, it's 40 of them right now related to Signot, and five of them in uh, GA. Uh, feature gates that is in GA means that uh, feature just was promoted to GA, so meaning that not more than two releases, meaning that we're doing, still doing a good job of promoting betas and uh, uh, making them uh, being shipped. So this is what we've been concentrating a lot on the reliability, stability, and uh, promoting perma betas so people wouldn't be confused using some functionality that was in beta since 1.11 and uh, uh, they, want, they just want some GAs uh, to be uh, uh, that what, what they use. And uh, if you look at other feature gates that we have, 19 of them, like majority of them is uh, alphas. So we do a lot of experimentation these days. Uh, we get through the stability phase, we have a lot of people trying to bring new features, new ideas, and we experiment in. Uh, you can see like 19 alpha features. Um, some of the beta features are also experiments still. Uh, for instance, not swap. We promoted it to beta, but it's still not uh, at the stage we want it to be, so it's kind of Alpha is uh, alpha tasted beta, um, and um, yeah, we still have CPU, topo, CPU manager policies that we experimenting on, so uh, that are also beta. So yeah, there are lots of, lots of experiments, and also many drafts. And you may ask what we experiment about, what we uh, care about the most right now, and uh, you can split all the experimentation uh, into two buckets, and third bucket, I'll explain later. So first bucket is new workload types. When I say new, nothing is new. Um, I mean, you can either run a job or web server, basically. Uh, I mean, there are other things, but uh, uh, what we ultimately want to do is to make sure that every new type of application uh, can run not only not only, uh, it's not only possible to run this application on Kubernetes, but it's also comfortable to run this uh, uh, application on Kubernetes. So we need to do many features to improve uh, experience for those um, uh, features. And then uh, we also want to better understand hardware. As we run on more and more environments, on more and more HPC uh, applications wants to run, and they want to fully utilize the hardware, um, we need to understand this hardware better. So we have all sorts of uh, resource managers, but we also want to understand other resources. We want to uh, extend into pluggable model when a uh, certain way how we taught Kubernetes to understand resources is not quite, uh, I mean, it's too general, and we want uh, more uh, precise uh, understanding. And I think Mike uh, will have a talk tomorrow about uh, resource management and how we, uh, what we do in this area. 
Um, yeah, well, this is Mike. Uh, ask him. Uh, and then uh, other big area is just quality of life improvements and uh, some things that we wanted to do for a long time and just finishing up. Uh, it's a lot of uh, things that uh, will help uh, cluster administrators and uh, end users to do Kubernetes better. So this is what we're doing and uh, um, Ronald will cover what exactly we did in 129. Yeah, so I'm gonna talk about some notable features that uh, we have worked on in 129. So this is a big one, like sidecar is a hugely demanded feature for a while, and it took a long time, but I, I feel that we have an elegant way to specify sidecars in pods now by just saying restart policy equal to always, and that allows things like Istio and service meshes and log forwarders to wrap around the lifecycle of your regular containers. So uh, in 129, sidecar went to beta, and we improved the termination ordering of the sidecar containers. So Sergey and Todd are doing a talk tomorrow. I, 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 it'll be really interesting if you wanna learn more about it. And I would also like to call out uh, Gunju and Mathias who worked a lot on this feature. So uh, user namespaces. So this is primarily uh, worked on by Giuseppe, Rodrigo, and Sasha. So what are user namespaces? So user namespaces are yet another namespace in the kernel that allow you to change which user is in your container. So you could technically be root inside your container while being non-root on the host. So if there's a container breakout and if your process is able to escape the container, it's not really root on the host. So it limits the harm that it can do or it can't read other pods or do anything on your host system. So this is like yet another layer in the onion of container security. So this feature has taken a long time. So finally we have features in the kernel like ID mapped mounts, which makes it easier to create pods with user namespaces. The latest update here is uh, we added changes to pod uh, security admission so that users can specify root inside the container and they are allowed to do that even in uh, baseline policy. So the way you enable user namespaces is by adding host users equal to false in your pod. So I implore you to please try it out and give us feedback so we can take it to beta. So this, is, this feature is a quality of life improvement. So this is worked on by Sohan, Peter, and Jerry. So if you're used to traditional Unix or Linux processes and daemons, they have a way to specify configuration through drop-in files, like for example, systemd, right? You can go to a specified directory, just override the settings you want to. So we are doing the same thing for the kubelet now. So it makes it very easy for you to manage your kubelet configuration. And these drop-ins are uh, applied in alphabetical order, so it's easy to know and group the settings as you override them. So these three are all related to images. So uh, the first one is for uh, splitting disks, it's really file systems. So what happens in practice is a lot of people want a separate disk to store their container images because they want to separate the I.O. utilized for pulling images from your, their workloads I.O. And you could have like huge container images, so you don't want, want them to be constantly being pooled, deleted, and life cycled on your main disk. But a problem that we have before this work is when you move your container images to a separate disk, the writable layer of your containers also get, gets moved to the second disk. Now, when your container starts writing files to the writable layer, Kubelet is no longer able to monitor that and evict the pods uh, based on the, what's being used there. So we are trying to fix that uh, with this feature, and potentially in the future, we can even separate out logs and other, other bits uh, that are covered by ephemeral storage. So this is uh, driven primarily by uh, Kevin Hannon. So the next one is parallel image pulls. So this is a nice quality of life improvement. Like We didn't have a good way to actually ensure 
how many pulls, uh, image pulls are happening on a node. And this could lead to situations, say on a reboot or something, you have 100 new pods scheduled and you're suddenly pulling like hundreds of images. You don't want your uh, node to come to a standstill because you no longer have I.O. remaining on your cloud. So this will allow you to restrict the number of images that are being pulled in parallel. So we just uh, made this feature beta in 129. So this is primarily worked on by uh, Reuven. The final one uh, is image GC. So the way image garbage collection has worked so far is you have a threshold. Typically, the default is 85%. And when the disk reaches uh, that much usage, then the kubelet will go and try and remove uh, images that are not used to make up space. So there's like definitely scope for having other policies to remove images. So Peter, who is here, added this feature where we can start, the kubelet can start removing images that haven't been used after a specified age. If, if it hasn't been used in a day, then kubelet will go and proactively clean up uh, the disk space rather than waiting for disk pressure to kick in. So there's, there's a lot of work happening in the uh, area of images. And uh, Peter uh, led an image work group. And Sergey is going to cover some of what that uh, group discovered in terms of uh, features that are needed. Thank you, Pranav. You have amazing memory remembering all those contributors and uh, every cap. And I think we all share the same passion for people contributing and uh, going through all the hurdles to deliver features. Uh, it's not an easy task, and we appreciate everybody. So image pools. How we do it in Kubernetes? So in Kubelet, um, Kubelet itself knows which images it wants to run pods. But it doesn't do downloads itself. So historically, we split download logic uh, into a separate interface. It's called image services interface. And you see uh, this interface has a very limited number of methods. Uh, you can describe this uh, interface very easily. So like, let's say Kubelet talking to runtime, like, hey, get me image. And then like, no, I don't have it. Uh, and then like, OK, pull it for me. Um, runtime pulls it for you and uh, gives, um, uh, gives back. So now Kubelet can use this image. So pretty straightforward. Uh, sometimes it's uh, a little bit strange, uh, because like, hey, uh, give me image. No, I cannot. Uh, Pull it, please, here are the credentials. And it will give you an image and say, like, ah, here you go. But uh, you know, uh, you asked for full, but his name is Bar. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, uh, it happens. Um, I'm oversimplifying here, but uh, uh, I will describe what's happening. And then uh, what also we have is, uh, you know, this uh, Kubelt is uh, running out of uh, disk, and like it uh, look at runtime saying, like, what do you have? Like, what can you help me clean up? And, uh, runtime re response with a list of images, and then we go and remove one image after another image while disk is on the fire, like we, we are under disk pressure, like let's do it already. Um, and um, yeah, that's uh, all interesting uh, interactions we have, uh, and most of these interruptions are due to a limited interface that we have between Kubelet and runtime. And we looked at uh, those interruptions and uh, problems that we have uh, in the space. Biggest problem for us is that uh, image service API is totally independent from uh, CRI runtime API. And it was designed intentionally. We wanted image service to be as uh, straightforward as possible. We thought that only will be storing images for us. So we we will teach it uh, to down to pull images, to uh, 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 put them on a disk, and uh, give us information about it. So it shouldn't know about disk. Uh, uh, it shouldn't know about image usage, for instance. This wasn't designed uh, originally. We wanted Kubelet to hold all the knowledge about what is used, why it's used, and when it's needed. Um, and then uh, we also said that Kubelet will hold hold will will. Held credentials because uh, runtime. Uh, I mean, when we're talking to container D, 
Uh, container daemon data don't really want to deal with credentials. Like credentials and memory, we need to do thread review. No, thank you. Uh, you already have credentials, you already downloaded them from somewhere, like deal with them. Uh, give, them give them to us for temporarily, we will keep them during the request and we'll done. Like, um, this is what typically interruption, interactions happen. That's why credential provider is uh, staying in Kubelet and uh, uh, that creates a lot of problems because Kubelet knows about credential providers and it knows about credential providers for all the registries and runtime knows which registry it wants to download the image from because it knows about mirrors. So if you have a credential for the mirror and runtime wants to use this mirror, there is no way for Kubelet and runtime to agree on like how to get those credentials and pass them there. Um, it's uh, not quite, uh, uh, it's just historical reasons mostly. Uh, that's how uh, Docker was uh, designed uh, and API was basically covering what Docker can do. But uh, yeah, that's reality that they need to deal with and uh, try to address uh, slowly. And then uh, all other problems like uh, if we want to download images based on uh, certain uh, uh, attributes of ports, like some ports want, uh, uh, maybe you want to dis dis distinguish whether you want to use mirror or not to use mirror based on port properties, port attributes. I mean, I'm just coming up with a scenario. And it wouldn't be possible because uh, Kubelet knows about one part, runtime service knows about the other part, uh, and they're not connected right now. So we thinking, uh, we've been thinking about this working group do we keep all the attributes and the ports in uh, Kubelet or we want to pass some of them into um, uh, image service? And some of them needed to be in image service right now. Uh, for instance, we start passing uh, a handler, like um, what is it, uh, runtime handler. So in Windows, uh, images are differentiated by runtime handler. Depending on what runtime handler you use, you pull images differently. So you need to pass this information to image service. So image service now knows more and uh, probably something that it doesn't really care about. So yeah, um, many interesting aspects here. And uh, finally, uh, disk usage patterns. Uh, as we notice, there are more and more people implementing uh, better ways I can tell it's better. Better ways to download, to pull images. You know, faster ways, uh, uh, and these ways don't necessarily use the disk as a way we get used to use the disk. So typically, we, as uh, Ronald mentioned in one of the caps, we start separating read-only layer from writable layer, but there may be other patterns. And we don't know about this pattern, so we want to know more about what uh, runtime did uh, with the uh, disk and uh, Kubelet needs to know about it because Kubelet is responsible for evictions and uh, garbage collection. So this is all what we discussed uh, in the uh, working group uh, that Peter led and uh, it, it was even more interesting conversations. Uh, so I posted a link to the notes and uh, we have some recordings uh, somewhere if you're interested. Um, and then I also wanted to talk about what is on top of mind on disk uh, uh, space. And disk space uh, get interested, like you remember we do a lot of experimentation and I mentioned that uh, new workloads is the number one uh, priority and uh, disk space, uh, container images uh, space uh, became interesting because we, we see more and more AI ML images become heavy, become like uh, more distributed. Uh, sometimes they change more than a uh, typical image would change. So there are different patterns with the new workload and uh, the old way we do, we deal with container images, not always work. So we have a lot of work uh, uh, that people proposed and discussing right now. Uh, one of them is uh, download progress. Like right now we have no way to know on which stage of, stage of download we are or container runtime is. So we want to have communication between Kubelet and uh, runtime on where uh, this disk image download uh, current stage is. Maybe some progress bar will be nice. And uh, then we think about better security. Um, so today if you pull the image with, uh, pull with a secret and then you want the same image, you just use the same name and it will be given to you even if you don't have a secret. So it's not quite secure. 
Um, yeah, Mike is uh, uh, she, uh, smiling here. But yeah, we, we, we need to fix the situation. And uh, we have other feature, uh, other requests, like some people don't want uh, images to be available once port is gone. So yeah, um, something to be done here. We don't have any native mechanism right now to implement this uh, scenario, but uh, it's definitely something that uh, uh, on top of uh, feature release that uh, come in as a request to Signode. And uh, faster image download is a kink. Uh, there are many people trying to implement different strategies, different patterns. Uh, plugging disk with uh, prefetched images, uh, like attaching disk mounting them, uh, doing lazy downloads of different sorts, um, uh, doing some priority based downloads when they offload everything else and uh, get uh, only what needed. So all those features are coming to the queue and uh, we're looking at them. Uh, unfortunately, community is not that huge, uh, otherwise we'll take all of them. Uh, so if you want to work with them, please come discuss and uh, we're definitely interested in hear what you are uh, thinking about it. And uh, here is a way you can get involved in this feature so any other uh, area you're interested in. So first of all, uh, I wanted to repeat our contributors' priorities. And those priorities didn't change. Uh, like every year we speak about them and we uh, opening new slide, like let's check our priorities changed. No, they're not changed. So reliability and stability first. Uh, we appreciate everybody coming with new features, but uh, if you want to bring feature, like maybe think about tests first. Uh, is the area you want to change uh, tested enough? Then look at uh, bugs opened in this area and uh, help us address these bugs before you uh, making a major uh, uh, change in this uh, area. So we prioritize and uh, value uh, contributions in this uh, order. And then uh, optimizations are always welcome. Uh, if you have a choice and you don't really care what you want to do, optimization versus um, uh, feature, please come with optimization first. Uh, it will help us a lot. Uh, we Kubelet grew over time, and it's uh, now not a small puppy. Um, so you, any optimization you can make is uh, very valuable. Uh, we do a lot of caps that around optimizations today, uh, but more is merrier. Uh, features always welcome. Uh, it's not a quick process, as we discussed. Um, we don't have many features merging every release, but uh, if you persistent enough and you uh, put energy behind, it's, it's doable all the time. And if you don't, uh, not ready to commit on anything major, you can always come help us with documentation, help us with uh, some logging improvements and uh, self-troubleshooting improvements. Uh, people all over the world struggling with Kubernetes to understand what the, this error means, so maybe you can help us improve this uh, error. And uh, just uh, being on top of PRs and issues is always welcome. So yeah, uh, please attend our meetings. Uh, it's a good way to help us. We have two meetings uh, a week. Uh, as I said, we have a reasonably big uh, SIG. So two meetings a week, you can attend either. One is uh, about features, uh, another about tests and stability. Uh, and we have a uh, triage guide uh, where you can find out how to help us triage things. And uh, uh, you can always just look at boards and see what's happening. Yeah, there is, those are contacts and uh, timing for meetings. Uh, if you're interested, please uh, join us. So now it's a thank you and uh, time for questions. Um, so uh, um, this is probably not about most of the things that you talked about. Uh, I have a question about logs from parts. Maybe it's an optimization in terms of the priorities. <laughs> so currently, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's the uh, container runtime or the kubelet that writes the logs from parts uh, on the disk, on the nodes disk, right? And if I have a cluster, I want to read those logs from the parts, I need to deploy a daemon set that uh, mount the proper volume and read those files, read the logs from those files, parse them, and do something with them, right? Um, 
would it be is it possible or uh, do you think it will be possible to maybe prevent have a different way of sending the logs from parts to an agent uh, rather than just uh, storing them on disk maybe send via tlp to an endpoint that is already there so i think uh, when we when we started the cri we defined the cri format and since then we haven't really done any work there in, in the area of improving how we uh, send logs so i think downstream on the container runtime side i see like different log drivers that can potentially forward it but maybe i think we should have that conversation and see if there's any scope of standardizing common patterns of like using a vector agent or a fluent d agent and how we not only uh, write to the cri format but also forward to these agents and then the other question is how do these agents life cycle work right like as you mentioned this daemon sets should they be instead be uh, run and life cycled by the runtime how is their memory and cpu allocation managed mm -hmm. and i think we have discovered some logging patterns so maybe we can also improve uh, and add to the documentation of the existing patterns and how conversation on how we improve the situation yeah. right so uh, you mentioned the logging drivers i know docker used to have logging drivers is it like included in the cri no, no, I think th this this would have to be something done at the runtime layer, like uh -huh. container D or cryo would have extensions that would allow you to additionally forward log somewhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Currently, it's not customizable at all, right? Yeah. All the CRI in Kubelet is expecting today is that the logs are written in the CRI format. If they are, if they aren't, your kubectl logs won't mm -hmm. get you anything. There's also a way, I think, to get the logs from the API server. Is that right? Uh, so, so you you when you do kubectl logs, you get redirected, and the logs get slapped up, and you can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. So, uh, if I want to like push this uh, forward, do I go to the SIG node or SIG instrumentation? So I, I would suggest you join one of the SIG node meetings and uh, bring this up as a topic of discussion. All right. Thank Great. You. Thanks very much. was just curious about some of the feature flag uh, you were talking about. Is that looking at like a per node basis or is that a cluster for a whole? I mean, often I see clusters that have uh, uh, uneven node sizes and things like that that I might want to do garbage collection uh, differently per node. Yeah, I think <laughs> that would probably be the next phase. First, we have to uh, allow a way to separate the disk. And I, I imagine like, your nodes would have to be homogeneous with similar side, um, size dis attached. I think beyond that, we have to, I guess, discuss more and uh, come up with a design. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, if no more questions, thank you everybody for coming. Please leave us good feedback and maybe we'll get better time next time. <laughs> Thanks, folks. Thank you. Thanks for joining.